Okay, so today's video is the program module for Boy Scouts part one. So as the title details, we're going to be going through the program module and how to best utilize it for Boy Scouts of America councils. So what we mean by that is there are really agenda wise, there's really two types of programs and we're going to go into details about those types of programs. We're going to go through individual versus group setup programs. Uh, we're going to talk about sessions and session events. Discuss course completion requirements, which is a key feature for Boy Scouts. And then we're going to go through adding facilities to a program. In part two, we're going to go through adding weeks of camp, building out payment schedules, discounts, and then reviewing kind of everything once again, specifically the group registration functions for Boy Scout summer camp. So where we're going to go is our test environment here. So just keep in mind this is pretty bland, but this is just a test environment for demos and setups. And we're going to go to the programs tab. So what we're going to do today is build a Boy Scout summer camp program. And that's really where we're going to start with what how did the Boy Scouts use the program module? The, boy, the program module for Boy Scouts is designed for really for camps with merit badge registration. And in the Boy Scout world, there's really two main types of camps. It's called University of Scouting, Merit Badge Day Fairs, really one time events, you know, this weekend, this Friday where the scouts go and they do merit badges for a day. You sign up and you can do as much requirements as you can on those badges a day and the event is over. The other type of event where Boy Scouts use this module is for summer camp, their week long summer camp. So they can have summer camp, you know, all uh, the full month of June, um, all the way till middle of July. And there's multiple weeks, there's, you know, 60 merit badges. And that's really what we're going to focus on today is Boy Scout summer camp. We'll do something separate for individual sign up or merit badge day. Uh, but everything I'm talking about now can apply to that as well. So what I'm going to do here first to start out is go to utilities and talk about our group registration attributes. So group registration attributes are part of the program we're going to be talking about today. And this information is default info that is collected as part of every group registration. So normally what I would suggest is instead of organization name, usually what you want to do is say is your uh, unit or troop number. That's usually what the scouts would. What this first field is, is identifies the group. So unit or troop number usually makes most sense. We have main contact info. Some organizations, uh, Boy Scouts will ask for, use these optional fields to collect council and district. Uh, you could also collect a secondary uh, main contact. But this, this information is going to be asked as every part of every program that we build uh, really today. So I'm going to go back to the programs tab and I'm going to select new program. Now, if you've seen our other videos on programs, obviously this is the same uh, build function, but really going to be focusing on the event type group sign up. So individual, as you saw in our previous video, is really designed for a parent or a guardian going on to register and signing up their child or their child and their sibling for an event with session events. So in that in that world, an individual sign up in the Boy Scout world is for Merit Badge Day's University of Scoutings, where it's not a troop leader coming up and signing up a whole group of kids. It's really an individual parent or guardian managing a registration for their kid or for their kid and their kid's best friend or their kid and or their both their uh, siblings so today again what we're going to focus on is group sign up really again what group sign up is it is designed specifically for boy scouts and it's designed so that a troop leader 
manages an entire registration for a group of scouts. That's really what group sign up is for. When you choose group sign up, you'll see all these other options down below. And bear with me here. Uh, this is part of why we're separating this into two videos is these are very important functions and I want to make sure that's very clear what they do and how they work. Basically what this is, is these are options. Each of these items here are options for your troop leaders or registration owners and you control what shows up to those leaders. So you control uh, when they can sign up for merit badges. You can you can tell the system, don't let them uh, uh, update their schedule. Don't let them remove merit badges. Only let them add merit badges. You control all that function. You also control reserving a block, naming individuals. So there's a lot of functions on this page that are very crucial to how your summer camp is run and I want to spend some time going through that. The first thing we see up here is the program name. So this is really going to be generic. This is going to be, you know, the name of your camp, BSA uh, Summer Camp 2021, 2021, 2022. So usually there, you know, camps have a specific name where I went to is Camp Wendy. Um, Camp High Sierra, that would normally be the program name with the year. We're going to build the weeks of camp in a moment. The effective date is the full and end date is the full life of the camp. So, for example, if I said, you know, the first camp, it starts on Monday, June 6th, and the last day of camp is uh, July 5th first or July 8th, we'll say. So the first day of week one is the 6th of June and the last day of the last week of camp is the 8th of July. So we're going to leave this as active. We're going to say group sign up and now we're going to go through all these functions of a group sign up. And again, you will get a visual on this in a moment, so it should make more sense, but I kind of go through what these options do. You can require a facility and we're going to go through building facilities, but what a facility means in the program module is a camp space. So when you when a, in the Boy Scout world, when you go to camp, often you book a cabin, a tent site or an asset for your troop to stay. And you have the option to require that they choose a campsite or facility within the program module. You can say yes or no. Is it required? The next thing you see is limit registration changes. And keep in mind that this can be changed at any time. So what this means is you can tell the system, don't allow my leaders uh, to decrease the number of scouts. They can't increase the number of scouts. They can't even change the number. So you, a lot of times how this is used in the Boy Scout world is Boy Scouts will set up camps almost a year before. And what they want people to do is just go in and tell us the number of people you have attending and then come back at a later date and provide us more information. But as camp gets closer, they want to lock in numbers. So to start off, you can have this where go ahead, change the number of people. We don't care. And then when you get closer to the camp date, you can change this and say you can't decrease or you can't increase or you can't change the number at all. So you can toggle through this as you get closer to the date of camp to control uh, the number of people that they have registered. Of course, there are capacity settings. But this just says if there is available to move around, don't let them let them whatever it may be. Registrants and classes, I would always say save updated session event classes, even if checkout is not completed. This will save you a lot of headache. So if you say do not save, what that means is that your leaders could go in and register for merit badges, but unless they check out and complete the registration, the session events aren't saved. The benefit of leaving it as do not is that if you have a payment schedule, you're basically forcing them to meet that schedule in order to save their merit badge selections. 
you got to be careful with that because you could have a lot of angry leaders because they may go in and say, oh, I'm building, building Billy and Sally's and James class merit badges, but I don't want to pay yet, so I'm just going to shut this window. If they do that with this set, it's not going to save their merit badge schedule. So it's up to you, but I would usually say save updated so that regardless of if they check out or not, it saves that schedule. The next thing you see is general instructions, and we'll come back to this, but I'll just put placeholder for now. But this shows up basically where they, the homepage of your uh, signup. Below, what you'll see is reserve a block, name individuals, or both. So again, a lot of the time with Boy Scout summer camp, to start off, a council will build the camp and let people just reserve a block of space. And so what that is, is they can go in, they can give their group information, and they can just give you a rough number of people attending, pay a deposit, and be done with it. And then later in the year, they can log back in and start naming individuals or signing up for merit badge classes if you offer them. So a, this is really the essence of a group program. It allows the Boy Scout Council to control when certain things are available. So for example's sake, I'm gonna say both, but this is really a key feature if for, for if your camp is open, you know, eight months in advance. You want your scout leaders to get in and reserve space but they may not know the names of every scout they just want to say you know i'm going to have at least 15 boys and eight adults here's my deposit hold my space so you can have this set just reserve a block and then you can send an email out to all the all of the troops registered and say hey please start logging into double knot and naming individuals on your camp and you can put put this function in and then they can come in and start naming individuals for summer camp. A lot of times people will just leave it at both because if you want to go in and just reserve space, great. If you want to name people, even better. This right here is, is a, is a uh, text header for the button. You'll see with this, I'm going to change this to name scouts and leaders. Sign up method, you're always going to leave this by individual. So what this does for Boy Scouts is you select the boy's name and you add them to a merit badge class. For Boy Scouts, that's the way to set it up. Check for scheduling conflicts. I would set this to manually. You can set it to automatic, but a lot of the times people set it to manual because they can view if there's a scheduling conflict, but they may want to keep it because the you know they don't want to pull out of one class and get removed from it and lose it from their schedule. If you have clear definitions in your leader's guide and every date is set, you can set this to automatic. And what it will do, if someone is in a merit badge that they overlaps another one, it's going to say, hey, you got to fix this scheduling conflict. Your call on how you want to set that up for your council. Uh, again, there is a button for this, and this is the text on the button and the instructional text below, and you have the ability to change what appears there. So I can say provide names for something like the naming scouts and leaders. Facility selection, same thing. This is a button that they select to choose a facility. So I can say choose the cabin or campsite. Now what you'll see here is up at the top um, again i set this to group so that's why all of these will will display you'll see underneath i have edit group page this is what shows up on um, the group forms page if you have a form attached to the event we have an attendance note we're not going to talk about this today we'll talk about this in a later video and that video will be more managing summer camp bsa summer camp registrations so I'm going to leave this at this level. I have my summer camp name. I got the effective dates. I have it set at um, active and group sign up. I'm not going to require a facility. I've changed um, a number of my items here. You'll see I put placeholder, register page, um, all types of good stuff. 
So I'm going to come here and put in save. All right, so now I have my BSA Summer Camp 2022. Now let's get back to what we're talking about in terms of our schedule. So we've talked about the types of programs. We talked about individual versus group. Now let's talk about sessions versus session events. So in a Boy Scout Summer Camp, your sessions are your weeks of camp. So for today's video, we're just going to build week one. What I like to do for this type of program is really focus on one week, get it perfected, and then use that first week as a template to build the rest of my weeks of camp. And this is all designed to do it that way. So our sessions are going to be our weeks of camp. And we're just going to start with week one today. And manage session events is your session events are your merit badges within those weeks. And you only have to build them once and it will copy down to every week of camp. So let's start with our new session. So what I'm going to do here is call this summer camp uh, 2022 week one. So this designates that this is specifically week one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my date for week one. So the first day is the six. So that's when I want them to arrive. And then I'm going to have them leave on that Friday. Um, that may not be standard, but we're going to go with that. Monday through Friday. The start time. Usually I don't set a start time here. You certainly can set a time, but the more important time setting really is on the session events because that's the schedule of merit badges throughout the day or the days, whatever it is. I usually put arrival departure information in the receipt confirmation message, uh, but you have that option. I'm not going to go through everything here because again, this is not an in-depth training on every single option. We're really focusing on BSA summer camp. If you're interested in every single option here, I'd, I would recommend um, our training manuals or looking through prior um, videos on calendar uh, uh, calendar activity registration. So online registration details, this is when you want the first part of registration to open. So remember, this is a long term event, so you can have registration start you know, even up to you know, a year before camp. For example's sake, I'm just going to say 1-1-2022. But again, a lot of the times, right after summer camp ends, councils will open up the next year's camp so people can log in and reserve space. Registration end date, I'm just going to go say the last day. This is the last day to accept new registrations. Remember, your leaders can log in and update this registration until whatever you set. This is the date when you want to stop allowing new registrations. So for example sake, I'll say 4-1-2022, but that could be any applicable date. You could maybe close it off a month after you start because everyone reserves their space. We're not accepting any new registrations. We're just dealing with what we have because they've taken up all our space. Cost is per. Um, I'm going to say named registrant and I'm going to say multiple cost. So what I want to do is a lot of times with Boy Scout camp, you know, we have we have scouts, um, you know, you can have scouts, you can have adults, you can have leaders, um, whatever you want to call uh, your types of registrants. You could have uh, male scouts, female scouts. So if you need to know numbers by male scout, female scout, adult leader, maybe you need an um, adult female leader, male leader, whatever it is, you can define that using registrant type. So I'm going to say my scouts are $325 and my adult leaders are $225. Um, you know, I'm going to say a minimum of one and one, but that's really not that big of a problem with scout camp because they're signing up a bunch. Now, I want to... Clear, clear something up. This is named registrant, meaning I want the names of these attendees. But remember, there's that option on the program build where you can say, for now, I just want to know the number of people attending. You don't need to require that they provide names unless you want to do that on the edit program screen. 
My maximum registrants for week one, I'm going to say there is room for 75 total people, whatever it may be. Um, I'm not going to worry about uh, min age or max age. I'm not going to ask for email or telephone for the scouts or the leaders. I just want their names. Again, if you want to do that, you can. Um, of course, we have receipt confirmation, cancellation policy. Really, what I want to talk about is this. This is very important for Boy Scouts summer camp. Almost always, you want them to be able to log in up until whatever date, and you can set it differently for different weeks. But you want to set a date where this is not about new registrations. This is about their existing registrations. And again, I'm going to harp on this, but this is key for Boy Scouts because they often, as I've said, they create registrations. They come back and they update it. They come in and add names. So a lot of these councils will have people reserve space. They'll email them, change the settings and say, OK, now go in and provide the names of scouts. And then a few months later, they say, OK, merit badge registration is going to start on this date. So what you see here, this determines when they can log up until when they can log in to make those changes. Beyond this date, there's all those other settings. So you control what displays, but this is crucial because without this, they can't even log in to see anything else. So you want to make sure you set an applicable date for week one. Remember, we can have different dates for different weeks. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, I'm going to close this off a couple weeks before. You know, the 25th of May, we're locking it down. We need to know everything for week one. We got to place food orders. We're locking it down on the 25th. By default, we're collecting group info. Um, I'm not going to do ticketing. I do want to set pay online only. I'm going to set my, you know, whatever I want here for event account, whatever my payments are. You could have different accounts for different weeks. You could have one financial account, BSA Camp 2022, whatever it may be. But let me go ahead and save this. Oh, contact telephone. They caught me. Put my, I won't put my cell phone here. Put the double knot number. OK, so let me go here and save. OK, so what I've done is create week one of summer camp. And basically, I created a calendar activity where I collect the names of adult leaders and scouts. There's a price to each of them, and that's it. That's really all I've done here. To really make this a program, I have to add session events because, again, session events our Boy Scout Merit Badge registration in the program module. So I've built my week one of camp. Again, in the next video, we're going to talk about building out multiple uh, weeks of camp, um, as I said in the, in the agenda. But really what we want to do after we built our session is we want to go look at session events, which are merit badges. So let's do that. So I'm going to go to Manage Session Events. And the first thing you're going to see is session event group. So in the Boy Scout world, the leader's guide is crucial for summer camp. And the leader's guide is a published um, PDF or document that's mailed out to leaders. And it says, here's our summer camp this year. Here's what we're offering. And that, that can be built in a few different ways. Usually what it is is it says, here is summer camp. Here is the merit badge schedule throughout the week. So that when you go on to double knot in a few months, here's what to expect. So really what you want to do here is match your leader's guide. So if your leader's guide goes by the day, so in that document it says on Monday, here are the, here are the merit badges. Or if it does block scheduling, whatever that is, you want to match that using session event group. And session event group is a way to organize your, uh, your merit badge. So, for example, usually what I should usually what we see is the type of badge is the session event group. So, for example, I'll say, you know, arts and crafts or something. And the effective date and end date, I want these available for the whole week, all my camp weeks. So I'll say save. And then maybe I have shooting sports is another. And I could have um, science 
is another um, uh, category. So if I could spell that right. <laughs> so again, you want to match your leader's guide. So when you're when they open it, do they see Monday through Wednesday classes or do they see classes by group of class? Whatever it may be, that's how you want to organize your session events groups. Basically, it just lets you categorize your session events or merit batches. So once you have your session event groups, you can actually build your merit badge schedule. So to do so, I'm going to select a session event group and then say new session event. So the description here can be something like this. You don't have to put merit badge. They're going to get the gist, but I'll put that here. The start date. So this can be two options here. You can say this happens Monday through Friday or Monday through Thursday, whatever it may be. And this is one class that they sign up for and it happens every day at 9.30 a.m. Now, if it's truly not every day, so let's say that it's I have this set here from 9 to 11 at 9 30 to 11 a.m. It's the 6th through the 9th and keep in mind this copies down to your other weeks of camp. So don't worry about these dates because the system will automatically look at this and say oh you have week two it happens month starts Monday of week two and ends Thursday of week two, same for week three and week four. So don't worry about this. It just looks at the first week to build the schedule, makes it simpler. So if you're, if you truly had, yeah, this is Monday through or Tuesday through Thursday is the class. Uh, Monday through Thursday is the class. That's great. You're done. If that is not the case, and maybe it's Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Thursday, something like that. You can use custom frequency just as you would in other programs to unearth calendar activities. What custom does is creates one basket tree merit badge, but that merit badge doesn't happen the sixth through the ninth on every day. Maybe it's just the sixth and the ninth. What it allows you to do is add instances. So you can say the first one is on six six, and the next one is on six nine, and that's it. It happens on those two days throughout the week. It doesn't happen. Um, it doesn't happen every day of the week. It just happens on these specific days. So you have that option um, in the in the build out. You don't have to have it defined as every single uh, day of the week. So let's say I'm going to say 930. I'll do the same time. It doesn't have to be the same time either. So I'll say 11. 11 a.m. Now, some important details here. So in Double Knot, we have built in course completion requirements. So course completion requirements are a big part of the of the program module for Boy Scout councils. What this allows you to do is actually mark off completion requirements. And provide leaders and scouts with documented, here's what you've done at camp, here's what was checked off. In a, in a later video, we will, in an administrative video, we'll show you how to run reports, create merit badge um, reports with completion requirements, but this is a very important step because right here, it will attach whatever requirements you set to this session event. So if we come in here and we say basketry, I can assign the course completion requirements basketry to this badge. Now, if I had another one, like maybe I had a class called leatherwork, I could add two basketry and leatherwork as one class. A lot of times in scouts, they'll combine two merit badges in one class. What you want to use is these individual merit badges. You may see some combined, that's legacy stuff like basketry and leather rope. Don't use that. That's going to be removed. Use the individual basketry and leather work. And what it will do 
is you can actually it will allow you to check off requirements for scouts. But the first step to that is assigning these requirements. The online registration details are going to copy down from the session that you built. So we have one one to four one is the last uh, new registration date. I'm going to change this because I want this to extend for the session events. I might stop new registrations on week one on four one, but I'm going to have merit badge registration open longer. Named registrant this price, the, you know, if there is a, um, you know, if there's a fee with this class for for, you know, though for there's products for making baskets, it's five dollars per scout. You can add that price here. Maximum registrants usually is really important, so I'll say for this the max is 25 scouts. And the all important modify registrants, so this is where you set the date up until they can modify this schedule. So this should really match what is on week one or whatever week, you know, week one's the one we built. So this should match week one of that camp and it will copy down accordingly for your other weeks of camp. So you'll see here, I have my basketry merit patch. I set my dates. The first one is on 6-6 six, six, and it, it's on 6-9. So it's one class, but it just happens on those two days throughout camp. You'll see I set my course completion requirements. I set it to named registrant. It's a $5 fee for this class, and I'm going to say save. Now what I can do is under arts and crafts, I can use this as a template. So now I'm going to build out all my other arts and crafts. So I can say copy, and I'm going to call this my leatherwork merit badge. Maybe it's a, we have an independent one. <laughs> And I'm going to say copy. Now what I want to do is after I copy that, I want to edit this. And I'm going to set this to just one time. And I'm going to say it's, it's every day, the 6th through the 9th, from 11.15 till 12.15 uh, p.m. So I'll say 11.15 a.m., 12.15 p.m. It's every day, the 6th through the 9th. And I want to add my uh, leather work, um, my leather work requirements to this badge. Now, maybe there's no fee for this one, and we have room for just 20, 20 scouts in this badge. I'll say save. Now I have leather work, I have basketry, I have leather work. Now, now what I want to do is let's do another. Um, another badge but i want to put that badge under my science um my science uh merit my science group let me see what is a good i think there's environmental science is a big one enviro science let's do enviro science so i'm going to build this one and I'll say, you know, this one is the 7th through the 9th, and it's going to be from 1 p.m. until 3 p.m. A lot of science. And I will say, here's my merit badge requirements that go along with it. There's no fee. Um, the I am going to set this to farther out. Again, I want this to be, you know, closer to camp. And... There's no price, but there is only room for 15 scouts. And I'm going to say save. And then my shooting sports, I'm going to add a couple shooting sports. Maybe we have archery. So you can see this is really like data entry stuff. It's going to take, but it's super important because you're building your leader's guide. So I'm going to say this one is the seventh and the eighth, and it is from 1 p.m to 2 30 p.m and i'm gonna say what are my requirements i'll say archery i'm gonna add the archery requirements i'm gonna change this badge to uh last data registers the 25th and there is a fee it's ten dollars per scout and the max registrants is 20. i'm gonna save that 
And then I'm going to copy this to create my um, shotgun merit badge. I'll copy that. And I'm going to edit. And really what I'm going to do is say this one is 3 p.m. to 5.30 p.m., you know, whatever it may be. And I'm going to say right here, shotgun shooting. So that's my requirements there. And I'm going to say there is a $5 fee and there's room for 10 scouts during that specific batch. I'll say save. So now I have under science, I have environmental science, under art and crafts, I have basketry, leather work, and then I have uh, shooting sports. I have archery and shotgun. So really, again, what you're going to do here is build out your entire leader's guide. So again, your session event groups could be Monday and Wednesday classes, uh, Tuesday, Thursday classes, or it can be like this, where it's under a category of badges. It's however you published your leader guide so that when they go into double knot, they have an understanding, a prior understanding of what to expect. So that's kind of crucial that you match your leader's guide to this setup. Okay, so last thing for today, what we're gonna talk about before we take an actual test it out is adding facilities. So let's not be confused with the facilities module in Double Knot. What we're talking about here is program facilities, not the same, don't talk to each other. These are facilities specifically for programs. So if I go to manage facilities, what's, what you're gonna see here is all of my programs. So I can come in here and I can say, here's my BSA Summer Camp 2022, and I can click Create Facility. And what's going to show up is all of my available cabins or tent sites, whatever I want to make available. So you can see here, I can click Add and make these available for Summer Camp 2022. I also can add new ones. So I could say, you know, Tent Site 1. Um, and I can say, is it for multiple groups or single groups? And I'm going to say it's for multiple groups with a minimum of two and a max of 50. And what that means is that multiple groups can book this up until a capacity of 50. Really, you wouldn't see that with cabins. It'd more be tent sites, but you get the gist. Um, minimum and maximum numbers, and you can add or remove them for your specific program year. You also can create facility bundles. What that does is that you can bundle, if, if you have a huge group that needs two facilities, you can actually bundle facilities together um, and create a bundled facility. Very rarely used, but if you have where you want to accommodate a massive troop, uh, you can do that using facility bundles. Okay, so let's kind of look at this again from high level, uh, dive into it, and then test it out to kind of wrap up this first video. So what I've done is I've built a BSA summer camp program, right? I built it again as group sign up. I've set it so that if they update it, they can change the number of scouts, that's fine. Again, we have capacities and I'll show you where I can set that. I have, I let them, you know, save their schedule, even if they don't check out and pay. I have name scouts and leaders. Um, I have activity sign up page. So what I'll say here is sign up for merit badges. Um, I have scheduling conflicts manual. Again, I have all of these custom headings, which I want to give you a, vis uh, a visual of. So I did that. Then what I did is I went to new session and I built summer camp week one and this is just like building a calendar activity i said here's the price for scouts here's the price for adults i have a maximum amount of room of 75 it's probably more like 200 but i have a room for 200 total throughout week one of camp i set my register up until date i set my financial account and I, I saved that. So I built week one. 
The next thing I did is I built my session events. So I built my session event groups. I and then underneath those, I built the appropriate merit badges according to the leader's guide. The next thing I did was I built camp facilities. So facilities basically say, you know, I want to I want to provide my camp leaders with the ability to choose a campsite or cabin. You can do that within Double Knot if you manage and build facilities. OK, so let's take a look before we're done today. Let's take a look at the um, let's take a look at what this looks like to an end user. So you can send people directly to this URL for week one. So let's take a look at this. Again, this is a pretty bland page, but you all understand how to build event details, things like that. I'm going to say register. Now, once I select register, the first thing they're going to see is their group information. So you remember, this is what we talked about, unit or troop number. So I'm going to say troop 508, which was my troop. I'm going to say Fred Jones, fj at dnot.com. And again, you a lot of councils will also ask for like council and district here. You can do that by editing the group registration attributes. Now I'm going to say continue. This is what I was waiting to show. So you'll see here these items and I'm going to bounce around a bit directly reflect what is on this edit program page. So what you'll see first is placeholder. So if I go back, you're going to see placeholder. So if you want to provide instructions to users on what the heck they're doing here, you can use that instruction field. You can say, welcome to Summer Camp 2022 registration. Tell us who's coming. What are they doing? Then reserve a campsite. Again, that's fairly clear here. So the first thing, who's coming, name scouts and leaders. So if I go back here, You'll see right here, name scouts and leaders provide names. That's what we're looking at. Sign up for merit badges, assign individuals. You'll see right on this page, those are right here. Sign up for merit badges. And on the next page, you'll see that other text. Same thing for facility. Choose a cabin or campsite. So I'm going to come here. And again, you have to remember that you, right now, you, you, set how this page works. So you'll see right here, if I had reserve a block, they wouldn't be able to provide names. All they'd be able to do on that page is tell me how many people were coming. If, if I wanted to, I could set it to, no, you have to name individuals or both. So right now on this page, I don't have, I could just tell it, you know, there's two scouts, and two adults and I could check out and make a payment, make a deposit, whatever it may be. But I'm going to provide names because I want to show you all the merit badge registration. So I'm going to say Scout 1 is Kellen Jones. Scout 2 is and adult is So I'm providing the names of each of these people. And now I'm going to say continue. And what are they doing? Sign up for merit badges. Now I can select this. And what you'll see is it'll provide me the names of each of the people I registered. So you'll see here who's coming. So I can provide, you know, all these names. I could come back and add more, whatever it is. So really the next thing is to tell the system, what are these people doing? So I've built, really for this, I've built just merit badges, but you could have adult activities here. So I can say for uh, Freddie, whoever it may be, scout or adult, here's where you wanna build their schedule. So I could say, well, Freddie is going to do environmental science and you know the shooting sport. You're building this scout's entire schedule 
And again, this is what comes back to a group program. It is one scout leader managing a registration for an entire group of people. So it's this person's responsibility to talk to each parent, get their what the scouts need to do. That's the scouting world. So that person then comes into the system, registers um, everybody, you know, picks the scouts here and says, OK, this scout's doing archery. They're also going to do basketry and they're also going to do environmental science, you know, whatever schedule they want. And so you can see, you can toggle around and see, OK, so this is Jamie's schedule. John doesn't have a schedule. I didn't build anything for adults. You don't have to sign people up for classes. Kellen, here's Kellen's schedule. So you can build this. Now, again, what I'm going to jump back to is this function. So what's important is is if I update, so say I create a registration a month ago, pay a deposit, then the Boy Scout Council emails me and says, hey, Dan, go ahead and log in and start signing your scouts up for merit badges. I could go into my program, do this, and if I close this window, it's still, now it won't do it now because I haven't completed this registration, but if I was updating this registration, which often happens with boy, in the Boy Scout world, if I close this, this schedule would still be saved because I set this to save updated session event selections. And again, I harp on this because this is one of the biggest pain points we see in scouts is that the scout councils get a phone call that's a screaming leader saying, I spent an hour in double knot adding a whole schedule for all these scouts and nothing saved. And then our development team looks in the database and it says, well, yeah, because you closed the window. <laughs> so in order to avoid that, we have enabled this function. So again, I encourage the scouts, uh, scout councils to use this function, save updated session event data. So after you build this information or provide this schedule, you continue. Now let's reserve a facility. So you can come in here and you can say, which one do you want? And because the minimums I've set, I have access. But if I just had one person, I wouldn't be able to sign up for one of these. So I'll say cabin two. Now that I've done that, um, I can check for scheduling conflicts. And it says, eh, Kellen has a scheduling conflict here. Look, you know, do you want to unregister? You can do that if you want. Be, the reason why it doesn't do it automatically is because I didn't um, require it. I didn't make it automatic to check for scheduling conflicts. If it was automatic, it would stop me and say, change Kellen's schedule. So if you wanted to do that, switch this to automatic. What's missing from here, what we'll talk about next time is a form. So if you want to collect form information, which is often the case, there'll be another button for a form. So it's right included in here will be an, a link to a form. They also can edit their group information here. If they need to change this, they can get back in here uh, or they can check out, make a payment and save their registration. Then you'll see each line item here, scouts, merit badges, what they're a leader, if they're an adult, everything is set here. So I hope that was helpful. Um, what we're going to do next time in part two is start adding weeks of camp. So now that we're going to add a form, and now that we've perfected week one, let's add weeks two, three, four, and five. We're also going to build and discuss payment schedules for Boy Scout summer camp. We're going to add a couple discounts because a lot of times we see discounts, like for example, we see register. Ten, for every 10 scouts, you get one free adult. That's a the common discount in the Boy Scout world. And then we're just going to do a review of the group registration functions. Because again, I know that there are a lot of things like on this page, and it's very important for the function of your camp before and after people register. So I thank you all for attending. And if you have any questions, please reach out to our support team. If you do have a question, just please provide context. Let them know what org you're with, where the camp is built, details, 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 um, and they'll get you settled with that issue. Thank you all for attending.